And I've uh, done 25 Brisbane to Gladstone races. Last race would have been about 2006, I think. Success is, uh, well, depends how you measure success. Even completing the race, I regard as, as being successful. Uh, we've had some um, uh, close tussles and uh, on one occasion, um, we actually should have been granted third place, but we were uh, received a 10% penalty, which took us back to sixth place. So I, I basically did the offshore racing for the camaraderie. I was never too worried about not getting podium finishes, etc. It was all about sailing with your mates. Look, it's, it's well known that uh, my wife Mareka is uh, an avid sailor and uh, she has done probably 17 to 19 Brisbane to Gladstone races. And we've sailed all our lives together, so she is definitely my favourite uh, first mate. There's uh, a number of second mates, <laughs> uh, the likes of Bruce Malcolm, John Clark, uh, Ian Chapman, all local blokes. Yeah, look, sailors let to le like to let off steam after a particularly a hard race. I mean, the Brisbane to Gladstone is, is a 300 nautical mile race, and now it's it's becoming a, 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 a you know a race that's generally completed well within 30 hours. Back uh, 30 years, then uh, you know the boats were quite as, anywhere near as fast, and the guys would be at sea for two days plus, so they'd let off the steam. And uh, this little boat of ours was 20, 28 foot long, as I say, and we had a party on board. There were 39 people on board, 28 foot, so we each had a less than a square foot of a room, you might say. Live streaming, it's great. I mean, we've been watching the Hobart live streaming. Anybody throughout the world can click on. And I mean, with social media the way it is, it's only a push, of, push of a button, and all your friends the other side of the world uh, will know how to follow this live streaming. So, not only is it good for the sport, uh, but it's good for the town. I mean, uh, it puts Gladstone back on the map. <laughs>